Customs, uh... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, now we're going live. We've got San Diego Customs where's Centers. That, where's that fancy caliper you had? The old one? Yeah. I put it in here. Oh, okay. Alright, so he's got this big dollar pile of crap that was on a... Well, you know that Honda FXR thing out there? Yeah, it was 1988, but uh, those came off the... Counter. That thing out there... That 1988 FXR, he had these brakes on there and he took them off because of something, I forget what it was. Because it had the wrong rotors on them. Because he had the wrong rotors on them. <clears throat> so he went down to Chip's uh, scratch and dent sale and he picked up some of these uh, new takeoff rollers that were just used to mock up. These mock up takeoff rotors that were not made wrong or anything. How much are these things? They're four hundred dollars each. Four hundred dollars each. Mm -hmm. Is that after they damage them or before? Oh, that's full retail. That's before they damage them. Well, you can't feel it. So it's all show. So you're thinking you don't like the non-lack of deburring? That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Well, this has a deburr mark in it. It does. Yeah. See the alarm? No, but it has an edge on it because it's sharp. And on the outside, uh, they're now, not, this they're, side they're here, right there too. this side here was not deburred. See, it's a sharp edge. That's the inside, yeah. Yeah. So, well, that's the outside actually. This is not deburred, and this is burred. See the chamfer marks in there? Look at these. I'll shave with those ones on those. Yeah, but when you push it down with the cutter, the pressure raises the edge up. <clears throat> so. Deburring it, you mean? Or drilling the yeah, hole. well, the, the cutter wasn't cutting, so it was pushing. So it was more like rubbing the metal off instead of cutting the metal. Oh, okay. So it kicked up a little bit of an edge up on the edge because of the pressure. You're pushing so hard on it, it came up. I see. It's like when you take a pick and you run across the ground or a shovel, it'll cut the groove out, but it also puts up a little edge on the side. Same thing's going on. Metal does that too. You don't think it does, but it does. I mean, like, norm would that come like that normally? And, you and then the these, shoes and these wear are, them out? And these are never been deburred on the edges here, so. So these were some. Uh, Experimental something. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the brake company. That's the short rotors. Too. These are from uh, well known. Uh, EBC? Nope. PM? Locally. No, not PM either. Uh, Braking? CNC brakes? That's automotive. <laughs> Alright, so these need to be deburred. So, where's your uh, deburring tool? I don't know. I gave, last time I saw I gave it to you. You, you gave it to me? Yeah, it was over there. It we was over there. Me. It was over there somewhere. It was on the lathe, but I gave it It was in the lathe? It was. Oh. I had it to you when you're working on the mill, though, on okay. those cases. Well, I think I'm going to use a different deeper ring tool. Okay, so these are, these are cutters. Is that a countersink type thing, or what? Yeah. These are cutters. Yeah. Okay. Well, these are high speed steel. See how they get dull when you cut on sharp edges, especially like what you're going to want me to cut with. Steel on. So yeah. they make them out of harder material like carbide. Like this piece here is carbide. Mm. And see, you can cut more stuff with that. So these are uh, new ones. So this one here, see how heavy it is? Yeah, that's, that's a hard carbide? That's because it's carbide. 420 bucks for that thing. Probably. Let's see, it's vintage carbide. See, it's got a... Use it it's hard, it's not it? supposed to be radius and worn out like mm -hmm. that. I see that. So that's a used the one. diamond cutter out. That's a used one. This one's a high speed. That's carbide there. Oh, brand new in the box. Yeah, it's a brand new one. That's why we're going to use that one. I think that's carbide. It's at high speed. How do you go, how do you go by size or what? Is that carbide or high speed? That might be high speed. Fullerton tool. Yeah. Doesn't say it. It's big, so it might be. It might just be high speed. Lindell. That's what Lindell breaks. Lindell breaks. Their stuff's aluminum. They don't make that steel shit like that. Lindell stuff's all aluminum. That's not. That's not Lindell. Hold on. That's high speed. So anyway, these are. You find some of these that are kind of semi-heavy you know, the real material. So these are all high speed down here. Oh, there are a couple. Oh, that black one's carbide. Probably, nope, it's too light. It's not carbide. It's fake. 
big Chinese carbide, it's a fake carbide. Yeah, it's fake stuff. See, having a big one as carbide would be very expensive. Galfer. And Galfer. I don't know what Galfer brakes look like. That's high speed. So we need a carbide one that's sharp. This is not sharp. That one is not sharp. That one has almost seen its better days. It has seen better days. That's a one bit. So to make <laughs> to make that sharp again, you have to grind it down to 50 thousands all the way around the whole thing. Yeah. I don't think I'm, I'm gonna... saving that one for emergency use only. No, that one I'll just run it through something. Okay, that's high speed because it's light. So these are all just cheap ass high speed stuff. I think it's Galfer what they are. Galfer, Gaffer, whatever. G A L F E R. It looks similar to EBC. Yeah, well, it's probably made in the same China factory. Or it could be British. <laughs> they had that good finish work. This one is pretty heavy here. I wouldn't know the difference. It doesn't look like carbide, but either way, it's not what we need. Alright, what do we got over here on new stuff? Okay, these are carbide over here. That's the new stuff over there? That one looks like it hasn't been beat up too bad yet. See, it's high speed here and welded carbide tip. Mm. So that's carbide. How's the edge look? It's new. It's new? I yeah. bought that for doing electro block holes. Really? Yeah, those SNS conversion electro blocks. That's, yeah, it's got the aluminum on the outside edge. SNS, really? It's been yeah. out. That's what I bought that for. So you know I really want to, I want to go screw this up on your stupid fight all the rotors over there. Yeah. I don't think so. Okay, what else do we got down here that can be used? It's probably the only one I got, and I'm not going to use it. It's <laughs> made for something. You make me go down to the damn machine shop and find a machine shop. You know, you can go spend your own 60 bucks and buy they, your own. They closed down the surplus joint. So yeah. now you know what you're looking for. You're looking for one of these. I have a bunch of those at home. Good. Well, are they made out of carbide? If I didn't give them to you yet. You didn't give them to me because they'd be in the drawer right here. Are I, they carbide? I or they sell they're mine or not. Are so they carbide? I don't know. They'd all be welded like that? The high speed under the well, you can feel it. you can feel the weight. Okay. Okay. I don't so. remember any of them being really exceptionally heavy. Yeah. Carbide. Yeah. All right. So we're not going to use that. Okay. So we can't use a little red handled one then. No, the blade will disappear instantly on that. Okay. So now we're going to go over here to the uh, the scratch and dent pile over here. <laughs> ah. Tetra's new. These are high speed here. New uh, grinding burrs. I don't know if like the right kind. Well, these are exactly the right ones. Just not the ones I want right now. See, I buy in volume. Yeah. Don't look at that price on there. You didn't pay that much for it. So all these cost. $20.80. You did not pay that much. So what? Any of those singles. I know you buy them by the thousands. You no, know, I buy them by this many. No, these cost money. These are not cheap. Got one bit. I buy them when they're on sale, but they are not cheap. These big ones like this, these are 60, 70 bucks a piece even on sale. I could take it home. That, that, that big long one there is even more money. Yeah. Those I could take it home and put the drill press and do it? That's a solid chunk of carbide. That's a three quarter inch. That's, that's, like that's probably 140, 50 dollar part. Yeah. Okay. I don't see anything in there I care about. There you go, That one already used. Oh, there's a brand new ball. I don't see a ball. Aren't these? Yeah, that's not a ball. It's all oh, just paper. Huh? Does that look like a ball to you? You mean a complete round one then, huh? Well, that's what ball means. I thought, like, is that a ball? Nope. It's oval. Okay. I don't know what a ball one looks like yet then. Looks like a ball. What's a ball look like? Circular. Round. Not oval shaped. Not oval. Looks like a ball. 
surprised I don't have any floating around in here anywhere. Well, this is some of Dad's old stuff. This Stone nice, one? Oh. High speed. What was that? This is all special tools all for the heads, huh? Some Spark play holes. There's some balls in here, but see, these are high uh, speed balls. Does that look like a ball to you? Yeah, it certainly does. Let me look at that. Is it worn out? Not yet. That one's been used. Well, of course it's used. But these are high speed, they're not carbide. So, uh, for aluminum though, or what? More for aluminum than they are for steel? They're for steel, they're just not, they're just not hardened. I don't understand the high speed concept. Ah, that looks like a ball. That's a ball for aluminum though. Yeah, because of wider uh, teeth on it? Of course. It's a pretty one. That'll cut like crazy. That'll, that'll rematch your butthole real quick. <laughs> now, I need one just like that, but for high speed. I mean, I mean, that's uh, for fine. Everything but. Well, I found one, just not the right one. We got some more, six more drawers to go still, though. No, that was it. That was all the cutting stuff? I thought I had some more. So where's the one that I have up here that I use? It's not here. A real long one? Um, Somebody stole, oh there they are right there. Yeah, but I don't have the bigger ones here. I got one right there. Are those all high speed though? Not all of them. That one's a coarse one again. You're looking for like a certain diameter too? Well it needs to be bigger than that. Some diameter like this one, but this is high speed. So that's high speed. A carbide. A carbide. We got a hell of a selection anyway. Maybe a winner? Yeah, I don't think it's carbide, but it's a I don't want to mess up your tools. It might be. Yeah, if case surplus is open, I could go get one we need. A, I don't see a welded line on it. They're closed. That's the one we need, though. So, well, I think it's high speed. I think it's high speed, not carbide, though. Well, there used to be one, old, one over here somewhere, but I, it disappeared. What about a stone one? Form tool. A what kind? A form tool. Form tool. It won't move. It's just high speed, but this is big. <laughs> so I had some for my milling machine that I was using on the mill. So let me get over here and see if there's. Get right in the way here for it. Oh, you're not moving my dial over there, are you? Moving what? Oh, I hope not. This is my go to pile over here. There we go. Carbide. It looks like carbide, a different carbide. color, man. That's a big ass one. Welded on there. These are straight chamfer ones, but a little, little coarse. Has that one been used? Yes. It was brand new, but that's carbide. Oh, okay. Let's see, that's a straight chamfer, not a radius. See, this would give you a radius. Okay. To it. Yeah. So, this will probably shatter. Of course. It looks like it might. Oh, so that's pointing one down there. So this one's too big. So this will work. Well, I used to have a smaller one that was in here too, but it disappeared one day. During the move? Uh, I'm not sure about that. It might have been before the move. Alright. It was always here to be used for the metal machine or that, whatever. It was. It's the one I need. I hope I'm not moving that It was bigger than this and it was carbide. See, that's the one that's missing. <coughs> so maybe it got put with the lay stuff? I doubt it. Yeah, that now over here on the boring bar. I didn't see it over here. Now we got some overflow over here. You always got some overflow. This is overflow. What do you call these stone? What are they called? So they're stones. That's what stones? This is just a bunch of weird crap you pick up from wherever. Yeah, like the stuff I used to throw Feel over there. that one. Oh, sharp. That'll bite your butt. I eat some metal with that one. Is that carbide? 
That's carbide. It's like a drill, isn't it? That's carbide. It's in cutting. Wow. A drill and a router. How big a router is that? It's thing? a router it's bit. It's too small, though. It's a router bit. But yeah, that'll that'll do some damage, but it won't last long. Huh. No rounds. These are high speed. I don't use high speed very often. <laughs> How come they're all worn out then? Those are resharpened. That's why they're in cloth. Yeah. I mean, uh, plastic. That means they've been resharpened. When they have the plastic on? Yeah. Really? I thought that meant they're new. How you know, light that is for being that big. Mm-hmm. Uh, titanium? No, it's just steel. High speed. It's not carbide. Carbide is noticeably heavier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm missing a couple. I'm about to break down and buy some more new ones. Let's go to the tool shop tomorrow. Some five ace ones. They're all gone. Huh? I think these are five ace. I got, got a caliper right there. If you leave that thing out like that much longer, people are going to start grabbing it all the time. You know, it's supposed to sit there and not be screwed with. <laughs> Nobody knows that but me and you. And now what's his name? So caliper's over here. Use. This one's not cheap either. And that is? This is 720. Oh, it's three quarters. A little bit bigger. So I need like a 5 8. This one here is going to be a half inch. 48. So it's a 5 8 round is the one I need. I what's, that, what's that other one right there? Nothing? That's just 3 quarter. That was a half. That was a half. And so it's a 5 8. That's half. half. I don't know. you got to remember, that's a quarter inch shank. So <clears> okay. That's half inch. And that's 3 quarter. Yeah, so 5 8 is the best one. Yeah, we should believe that. So this is a half inch. Half inch, you're getting pretty far up the mm -hmm. thing when you're doing it. So this one here didn't work that good. Kind of worked, but not real good. So if you go on the other side, you'll see better. Somebody uh, didn't clean up after themselves. It wasn't me. I think they're cutting some uh, dirt. You want dirt. the vacuum cleaner? They have some dirt going over here. Who used that last? Wasn't you, was it? Don't ask. Didn't care about anything. These are the kind I have. Those are center drills. Center drill? Yeah. In lieu of an uh, end mill? Okay, we need a tool. Kind. To hold this. Big vice? What is that special tool? Do you recognize it? It looks like a belt drive gear. It's a Sporster, pulley. Sporster clutch. Huh? Okay, no, I don't recognize it then. Iron head Sporster. They work good on all those things. Okay, so there's your tool. It's down here like this. Mm -hmm. Is that tightened down? Oh, I see how it works. You lock it down there, and you have a thumb adjustment here. For the fine tuning? Fine tuning. You're a fine tuning type guy. You can go down as far as you want. But how far do you need to go is what I want to know. Now, if you push close to the edge, it won't slip over like this when you put pressure on If you can hold it level? And now, we, just, we don't know how deep it is. I got this thing in my face right here. I don't know what this thing is in my eyeball here. The light switch. Throw it up on top. Trying to get me. Good job there, Joe. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to adjust this down a little bit. Okay, we're going to go fast. We're going to go too fast for this. See the chamfer there? Yeah. All the way around? Not very deep. You can tell these edge on it, so it's not very sharp. See how you feel it? Yep. Give us a little extra right here. That chamfer's bigger. Mm -hmm. looks, but that looks good. So that's D bird, not D bird. We're going to do these all the same. Production drill press work. Once it stops coating, get off the damn thing. 
just slide around and fall off of there. How many holes are there, Joe? I'm counting right now, we're at 10. Do I get a dollar each? Yep. That'll pay for this cutter eventually. You're gonna pay for this. Probably 40 bucks or something like that. Because you've used it for 85 different projects already. Now I lost my count. Well. <laughs> you start over again. You got halfway there right now. Start over. The first ones were a sample. R&D. Just went past halfway. The other ones are just R&D. <laughs> <laughs> they don't count. Now for $400, they, they could have done this with a machine. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's some reason that they didn't. It's probably, like, a, like you said, a discount thing. Maybe it's warped? Oh, I hope not. Better not be. Only used for mock-up. I never knew the reason for... Uh, those floating brake rotors like that until today. Why? For cooling. Oh, bullshit. That's the little gap between the between the, the brake surface and the and the hub. That supposedly makes them cooler. Nope. Okay. That's a hundred percent crap. Really? What's your reason? Hundred percent crap. Okay, there's one. Six. So this expands, mm -hmm. grows outward, stays flat because the cross section is only this thick. Whereas this thick, when it expands out, all those different areas expand at a different rate and it would cut on you naturally. I was wrong with that one I have on my bike right now. So it doesn't cool better, it actually gets hotter because it doesn't heat so from here to here. So it's not heating the whole thing up. So this thing gets hot real quick because there's no area here. Right. So it'll get hot fast, but it'll stay straight. Because it's not heating the whole thing. Well, it'll still warp if you overheat it. It'll still warp. Yeah. It won't warp as much. But it will not cool better. That's cool. And these holes in here, they don't make it cool better either. It's <laughs> all for looks. The main thing, it doesn't lighten it. Really? Yeah, man, it doesn't lighten it. The less material you got to heat up, the quicker it'll get hot, and the quicker it will cool down after it's hot. Which is better for breaking. Because there's less physical mass that you have to cool yeah. to heat up. So on the brake system, you want a nice big heavy piece of cast iron. If you're doing braking, then you won't cool, then you stop for a while. Like on a big truck or something, something like that. Yeah. Put big ass brakes on, it takes a while to get them hot. By the time they get hot, you're done. You're down the hill, and you drive it down the flat, it cools off. Now when you're racing, on the brakes all the time, they never cool. So you want to be able to get the heat out of there faster. That's what the holes are for? I told you, the holes don't do anything except make it lighter. Hmm. It adds slightly more surface area to cool it, but not much. But the thing is, you have less mass, so it gets hot quicker. Now, whether it'll cool down any quicker, debatable. It'll definitely get hotter quicker. That's where I started yet? Looks yeah, like that's it, yeah. So I lost count though. Now the centers can be made out of anything, but aluminum's lighter, so you make them out of aluminum. Yeah. Less rotating mass. Now this here you gotta you gotta deeper all these. These you do with a grinder. Oh. Or a file. You don't have the file. Just knock them off. Okay. Cut the radius file. All right. No, but you are gonna have to stone this surface here because there are lips here. Stone the surface. Where's the other one? Over here on the bench. Can we get it? You lost it. Where's the stone at? Stone these off, he said. Stone. Oh, that's stone, okay. I have some of those at home. Lubricant for a stone. Stone and lubricant for the stone. Hold around the mill now.
just to clean up the little uh, lips. Huh? That would almost do the edges too, wouldn't it? Nope. Huh? You hear the high spots. Yeah. Go away. Mm -hmm. There's a lubricant you have to yeah, see. Just stuff. anything. Soap and water would work. It's a cell, so it blows up. Yeah. Like on car, they got water. Mm -hmm. You're buffing with water. You know, load up your paper and scratch the surface. Same thing. <laughs> you put a bit of soap in there, helps a little bit too. But you can hear the high spots in there as you go across. The stone will cut real, real flat. I light on? Yeah. Yeah, the stone, yeah. As long as it's flat stone, right? Well, I'm using the flat side. That's what I'm saying, as long as you have a flat this side. This side here is where I sharp my knife, it ain't flat. Okay. It looks flat. <laughs> it ain't flat. But it ain't. Middle of it's probably worn a bit, huh? Yeah. You see over here, you don't have more of the marks down there. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, there you go again. This is how you fix custom parts, folks. High dollar stuff. Yeah. The cheaper it is, the better it is. Well, when you deburr this outer edge, you'll have to do this also. But mm -hmm. The thing is, once I do this, you don't have to deburr the outer edge because... It almost be gone, won't it? It's flat. I'm taking burr off right now. Yeah. Put the stone. Stone's getting it. It's just, this is real sharp. It'll cut you. It'll hit you. It looks almost like it's been... Uh, you know, does not have an edge on the outside right now? The high, part, the high part's good, but not the low part. That's what it is. You actually look at it, you see a little shiny edge right here. Can you see how this has got an edge on it right here? But the inside doesn't. This has got a chamfer on it. This is not. Yeah. What's that mean? They cut them twice, huh? Without the cutting away, they didn't come back and do this, because this requires you to do individually with a CNC machine. Mm -hmm. which they're not going to do it because they cost money. They should do that. If it's a high-end part, every hole would be deburred. It is a high-end part. No, it isn't. It's a cheap part. You buy a cheap steel rotor, those holes are all deburred. But it's still high-end. It costs a lot of money, if I put it that way. I don't know if it's high-end or not, but they're not cheap. Cost doesn't make it high end. Right. Quality makes it high end, right? Correct. Material and workmanship makes prices go up. What bike are we going to run out at the desert next month, anyway? Single. Not the bill. Not the bill. No. Not the bill. Not a single. You got to pull that thing out of there one of these days too. Yeah, I gotta go Not like a day or two before we get ready to go uh, either. Probably a night before, you mean. Let's yeah. not do it like that. That's how racers always do stuff. Yeah, you know, I got some important stuff I gotta work on, not my stuff. <laughs> get a high oh, yeah, I heard it. This side here is not as flat as the other side. Does that mean it may be warped? Is that what you're trying to the say? The outside edges are hitting. Oh. You can see how it's cut on the outside, mm -hmm. sanding. It's like most things you got a high, a high spot on the low side. Uh, this is the highest, this is the low side, it's not hitting. So the cutting pressure was going downward probably, so we pushed it down. Just like you get edges here, you right. also get edges when you cut all the stuff. These are probably stamped in there or roached in there, and they're not fucking not individually cut. Quality control was down that day. So when they stamped that sucker, this was on the top, not with the bottom. Is, you really think they were stamped? Possibly. Probably. Yeah. That's a hell of a press. Yeah, you got big presses. Okay, so now, we need bird. Well, it's not good for the brakes? They're lubricated now. Yeah. Sounds much better. Looks much better.
Well, you got a microfiber towel and it's not digging oh, in. Walmart microfiber towel. See, it's not catching. Yeah, so that means it's cleaned. Because I took the sharp, the burrs off. Yeah. The burrs on there. How does it feel? What, this one? Mm -hmm. It's not sharp. Good. You want me to run your hand over the sharp? sharp. This, like, this, this is a cutting edge. Right. It's sharp this way, but there's no burrs on it. So you hit those with file then? So when you go across like that, it doesn't hurt you. But if you go out at a cutting angle like this, it'll cut you. Okay. Do I need to file those outside edges still? When you file it, you have to come back and do your burr. See how that was a high spot there? Mm -hmm. See how the burr is gone? You have to deburr the deburring tool. Okay. It's a deburring with tool. a stone? With stone. Stone mm -hmm. has less pressure than anything else. So you get a better surface finish when you do it with stone. Everybody thinks a cutting tool gives you the best finish. Nope. That's why cars are sanded and not ground. <laughs> and not drilled. Before you paint them. Yeah. And after you paint them too. All right. So there's one down. One down. Trade you. But you didn't do this yet. So you need to go and cut these out. Okay. With something. And just a fine file, like a little jeweler's file deal? Just get the edge off? Sanding would be better. Okay. You have some, have some sanding stones? I have sanding paper. I have a bunch of stones at home too though, but I'm not sure which one I would stones use. Stones are better. Paper would follow the surface and make a problem. Alright, sit for that one. One more to go. Okay. Okay, here we go. Number two. <laughs> they all kinds of special things for the drill press and the press. Iron head spores for the good boy. The cast iron, I think? Yeah. You know, cheap ass aluminum stuff that doesn't stay flat and free. Right. For those of you that are watching on your phone, I'm going to give you one little close up. I'm gonna go back to wide angle. There it is, folks. That's all you get. <laughs> People don't like the close up shots on the big screen. So, here's this real press? Uh, 150, it says on it. Sears Roebuck, been a while. Been out of business for at least 10. Is that your dad's or does this come from the Navy? Dad's. No year on it, but I know it's not brand new. It doesn't say made in China anywhere. Cast iron. Been working all these years, hasn't broke yet. Must be something good. Been modified. And is this a modification to the handle on there? Uh, I, I never seen that, you know, like to tilt the uh, motor up like that. I don't think so. It might be. He might have made it. Modified the gearing up there. Yeah. That's why it's going so slow. Uh, Dad bought this back in this probably mid '60s. Still going strong. Falling off my table here. So. Readjusting. You don't want it hitting the gear part, right? It's forcing, it's forcing it over this way, is what it's doing. I'm looking for cut. I need a change. Oh. Yeah, it's going to go deeper now? When I move the table over, it drops slightly. I have to readjust it. Okay. It's not. It's the same. I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hey, 
knocking them out now. Looks like a little bit stick or thinner over there. That looks like a Ford bearing retainer for the rear brake drums. Keeps the bearing in place. I might have come and get that from you one of these days. Uh, that's the bearing for the Sportster hub. Oh. I broke one one time when the drums I've been doing. Is that all the way around? Was that it? All right. Nice work, Keenan. What is this thing? A fence for you got a table saw too? Or what? See, we have the rusty clutch. Oh, there it is. Here, see. Wow. That's been there for about 30 years. <laughs> Sitting there? Yeah. You want the phone? Yeah, that's all right. What do you got? Turn the camera off. 